Hey, this is Georgie. Welcome to Georgie's Room of Rock. How's everyone doing out there today? It's Saturday. I'm off. Don't have too many Saturdays off, so it's nice to have Saturday off. And uh, doing another video here. And this one's uh, be a little different. I'm trying to do a little different things, like I said, on the channel. This is a different topic. Um, I'm talking about legacy bands whose debut albums don't sound anything like that what they became. And it's totally different from what they became. Even by the second album, third album, maybe they're different. Um, so I decided to do a video like that. So they're, you know, first album you, you get. And it's funny because the first album bands do usually, like, they write the whole, life, the whole um, early life to write an album. And sometimes it's just not, you know, what you think it's going to be when you listen to the band. And especially if you hear, listen, get into a band later and have it, you know, for like 20 years or something, even more. And then their first album you listen to it, so it doesn't sound like it's the same band. Like, is it the same band? And it's the same band. But it's, I picked 10, um, 10 bands that kind of did that. So. I'm gonna start with um, ones that are like they're very they have a little different fun, but but the first one I'm gonna show you is uh, not too diff too far from what they became, but there's some hints of what they became. But the first album really isn't anything what the band became, and this band's been around forever. They've been around since uh, well since this first album came out in '79, um, and uh, part of the new wave of British heavy metal bands, and it's the first Saxon album. So. It's got all the, the original guys on it, a bit Byford and and uh, what's his name? Let me get, let me get the right the right thing here for the um the guys who do it in the band here. And I hate when I don't like they don't show it here. Well, here's the rest of the here's the original band. Anyway, the album is uh, very different from their the like Wheels of Steel and. Denim of Leather, all those, those classic albums. I mean, not that it's a bad album. It's not my a favorite of mine, but the lovely album cover. But um, really, the only songs from here that I really think are sound like Saxon are uh, Steins of the Highway and uh, Still Fit the Boogie. The other ones are a little bit different. Uh, Frozen Rainbow, Big Teaser, Judgment Day. They're, uh, they're hints of it in here, but there's really the album itself is really not what they would become and what they are today is a lot different and really good to see it today to this day their later material is so good so this album is just not what you expect from Saxon if you went back to the catalogs and this might be a little bit odd for you but not too odd this is like the least least offender of the albums we're going to show not offender but because some of the albums I think are good so I have a couple I don't even own I'm going to talk about them those I'm probably, probably never going to own but anyway we'll go on with the list here second one I'm going to show you came out in uh I got my notes over here, so I keep looking over here, sorry. This one came out in 79 also. Another classic German band. And the album is a lot different than what you'd expect from the band. And it's, uh, except the Chainsaw album, if you want to call it that one. And, you know, again, it's got some little points and hints to it from, like, the next album and uh, all that. But this, of course, has Udo Schneider, Wolf Hoffman, Stefan Kaufman on drums, Peter Baltes, and, uh, George Fisher, rhythm guitar. Here's the uh, inner for this little digi pack here. But it's not a bad album. I actually like the album quite a bit. Uh, Lady Lou, I like a lot. Sounds of War, that's rock and roll. Hell Driver, Street Fighter. It's got some good tracks on it. It just doesn't sound like except no balls to the wall and and uh, loving, loving the Leather Boys and that kind of stuff. And even later on stuff that stuff today that sounds nothing like it. But this is where they started, and it does sound a lot different from for Accept, but uh, so I thought it belonged on this list for this uh, different out debut that don't sound like them. Now this one here is uh, the next one, the third one. Came out in 74. I don't have the original cover for this. And it just uh, came out with, um, it's out now, I think, the, the, the remixed version. I don't have the remixed version, but I have the original here. Not the original cover, but Rock and Roller from Judas Priest. Very different from priest would become even with sadly the testing that's when they found their footing and then of course it's sent for sin and staying class and killing uh killing machine on to british steel and screen bench and all that they're totally different it's a very different album it's i actually like the album i don't know if i, I haven't decided whether i'm gonna get the, the remix version or not i did listen to some of it online and it's it sounds better but i'm so used to this to this to this version here i like the other album cover better than the, the uh, original one but uh, one for the road, it was good. I love the song Rock and Roller, it's always one of my favorite songs. And uh, of course, the winter deep freeze, winter retreats, cheater that's one song, great and never satisfied. Great, great, great songs there. 
it doesn't sound like the priest you'd know. And it's got, you know, Halford and Tipton and and uh, Downing on here and John Hinch on drums. But it definitely doesn't sound like the priest you'd know. But it's still a good album, but definitely different. Definitely different. Fourth one here, we're going to jump ahead for years for this one. This is 1984. And this band's been around since then. It's a, And they have a long career. It started as Southern Death Cult. Very gothic kind of kind of thing, but the cult here, Dream Time. And this is like a newer one for me, but I've heard the album some, some songs. Before. I like the album too. It's very different from what the cult, but cults go through different changes, you know. They went to the whole uh, just hard rock ACDC sound a little bit. Then they went to their kind of glammy, not glam, not really hair metal, but kind of. And then they went back to their acoustic stuff. And their, it's very different, very different band. But this one's very different from what they, they, they did. Very new wave ish in a way. Um, Horse Nation and uh, Go West. I love those two songs there. Dream Time and uh, Bad Medicine Waltz. Good stuff, though, but very different from what the cult would become later on. But still a, a solid album. I still like the album, though. So there you go. Next one. This one came out in, in 79. And this one is, uh, I got a better look here, Helix. Breaking Loose, which is this one right here. This is all I got. I have this done a double thing here in the early years. And uh, Helix, Canadian band, Brian Vollmer, still around doing it. And uh, Brent Dorman and Paul Hackman, the late Paul Hackman. This one's, it's not too far removed, but more bluesy and more 70s sounding, definitely, for this one. But uh, good songs on here, Down in the City, one of my favorite songs there. Crazy Women, an odd song, so is Billy Oxygen, but it's good there. Um, You're a Woman Now, it's a good song. And uh, again, not a bad album from... Uh, from Helix, a little different than what they had become. Become a little more commercial, more hair metalish back in the 80s, and then more down to earth in there, more bluesy, harder stuff later on, too. Definitely a different album. So, definitely here's the original one, like I said. It looks a little different there. The top with the chains on it. But still a good album. Definitely different than what they became. So, there you go. Now, the next two are ones I don't own. And it's going to be, the next one's going to be from 76, and it's, um, I'm going to put it on the screen over here, uh, the first Crocus album. Now, if you saw, I had, um, I did it um, months ago, I did a ranking of the Crocus album, that was my last one, because it's a terrible album. It does not sound like anything, no, no um, Mark Storacci, the only original member on here is uh, Chris Von Rohr, and the uh, singer is, uh, I know what I was going to this one, Peter Richards on vocals. The album is just nothing, to me, there's nothing redeeming about the album. It's an awful album. It's a terrible, this sounds nothing like Krogus to become. They're more like ACDC type hard rock stuff later on. Nothing bluesy, excuse me. It's a terrible album. Terrible. I mean, I mean, I think it's terrible, in my opinion. Nothing redeeming about it at all. Um, but that's definitely, definitely, what, if you bought Krogus and went back and bought that, that album, you're like, what the hell is this? You wouldn't even think it's the same band. The logo's really weird, too. They went to their, their, their more normal logo the next album, which isn't much better, but a little bit better. But their follow-up to that to this one here, but still a terrible album. So that's definitely list. It definitely doesn't sound like Crocus at all. Totally changed their way there. And the next one is another one. I don't own it. I don't know. It's not really a horrible album. This has, um, this is from 1970, and it's the first UFO, UFO 1. And this has no Michael Schenker, but it's had Pete Way and, um, Phil Mogg on it, and Andy Parker, and uh, it doesn't have, uh, it's this, the guitar player is Mike Bolton, not Michael Bolton, but Mike Bolton, and it's very space rock kind of stuff, it's very, very different, a um, couple of decent songs on it, um, not a horrible thing, but not usually a cup of tea, I didn't decide whether I might pick it up that in the second one too, the second one's kind of the same vein, but nothing like the later, you know, um, Force It, and Lights Out, and uh, the album's like that, and, and of course, Strangers in the Night, the lab, no, sounds nothing like that. Totally different, just uh, very spacey. He's still got the full mod's great voice, and uh, but still, the, the songs are just very, very, like I said, space rock, very strange stuff. So they got Michael Schenker in the band for the Phenomenon album, and it's just um, totally different there. But, yeah, so I put UFO on there. I don't own them, that one album either. Okay, but next one, they do own. And this is a newer one by, for me, but I do like it. And this one came out in 72. Uh, and it is Scorpion's Lonesome Crow. This is another very odd album, but not really a bad album. I see they have the uh, thing on here. It's very plain here. It's got Klaus Mayer, Michael, Sch Michael Schenker on this one. 
Rudolf Schenker, Wolfgang uh, Designy on drums, and Lothar Hainburns. They didn't have uh, Francis Bukhaus on the drums on this. I mean, a bass on this one. Again, very, it, as they call it, kraut rock. So, very different. Uh, songs are different. I'm going mad. It all depends. In search of peace of mind. The song Lones and Crow is very long and epic. Um, it's a strange album. It's not a bad album. I actually quite enjoy it. But even though it's just nothing like they become. Nothing like even the second next album, Flight of the Rainbow, has got some hints of what Scorpions really would become. Because they didn't have, they didn't have Uli Roth on this one yet. And uh, that's why it's so different. But not a horrible album. Just doesn't sound like the Scorpions. Like you think used to like, you know, um, the later stuff. Even Uli Roth or even later on with, um, what do you call it? Matthias Jabs of Blackout and, uh, what do you call it? Love it first thing. Nothing like that. Totally different. Very, very, really. Like, you wouldn't even think it's the same band. You think it's a different name, different band with a different uh, thing. Because Klaus doesn't even sound too much like Klaus on this. But very different. But I had to put this one on the list. So there you go. That's very different from the Scorpions become. And this next one is from 1971. And absolutely one of the best. Um, great voice and a really good songwriter. The songs are just don't quite make it. Not that it's a bad one either. It's it's not horrible at all because it's the great Thin Lizzy and their first album. It's very different from what Thin Lizzy would become because this has um this has um of course Phil Lina, the great the late great fine Phil Lina, um Eric Bell and uh, Brian Downey on drums. There they are right there. So again, very very Irish folk kind of rock kind of. Um, the Friendly Ranger at the at the uh, Confort Castle. Very strange name. Very long names. Some of the titles here. Long. Look what the wind blew in. Eerie. Return of the Farmer's Son. Um, Saga of the Aging Orphan. It's it's just very very different. Very odd for Thin Lizzy. But that was what they were doing back then. It's their second album's kind of the same way, but a little bit better the second one. But this one's very, like I said. Irish blues rock kind of stuff, but not horrible because it's, it's Phil Lanoff just has a great voice, in my opinion. He's still a great songwriter. Very different though. For this, if, you the, if you use the Boys Are Back in Town, Jailbreak, and uh, uh, what do you call it? Bad Reputation. Those albums just sounds nothing like that. Totally different. It's a totally different kind of band. So this is pre even um, Whiskey in a Jar, I believe, too. All right, now the last one is from 1969, and uh, this one is. Uh, Another weird one. This guy is still around, still rocking, still still sounds great. And totally, this first album is very different. And uh, it's Alice Cooper, Pretties For You. Very psychedelic. Very, very, very different. Very, very different. And it's, I listened to recently, the songs are very short too. And uh, I wish I could read this, the titles here. But um, I don't think it's kind of not. This is an old copy I have here. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's got some d decent songs. Most of the songs are like weird type, like uh, 10 Minutes Before the Worm, Sing the Low, Sweet Cheerio, Living, Fields of Regret, weird songs like that. BB on Mars is a short little one. Reflected really is one song I really do like a lot. And there's another one, uh, I can't remember the name of it now. I don't know if it's no longer um Umpire or something. One of them actually sounds like a, sounds like a Beatles song, actually. But that makes sense because it's coming to the time it came out from 69. But if you're looking for uh, Schools Out and uh, Billion Dollar Babies, Killer, those kind of songs, and, uh, you know, Under My Wheels, this is not it. This is very weird, a very strange album for Alice Cooper. But it's not a horrible album, though. Like it's none of these are, some of them aren't horrible, but it's not a bad album. It's not one I go, go back to a lot, but... It's got some, it's got, it's okay. Like I said, the psychedelic stuff, you might like it a lot. Who knows? But uh, definitely, uh, next album kind of sounds a little like it here on the Frank Zappa label, which kind of sounds like a Frank Zappa kind of stuff. The next album, Easy Action, is a little bit better, but this one's definitely very strange. So, anyway, that's uh, that's it. That's my, my 10 albums, 10 bands that sound, their debuts sound nothing like, or nothing what they become. So, that's it. Guys, um, what do you think? Tell me in the comments what you think. Do you like any of these albums? you don't like them? Never heard them? Um, let me know in the comments. Love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, that's it. That is all I got to say for this one. And uh, that's it. We'll see you next time, guys. And uh, if you like to see, please like and subscribe and comment. See people watch this stuff and no one subscribes, which, you know, it's your, it's your business. But, you know, 
Nice people at least watch this video. I'm going to subscribe and watch a little more, but it is what it is. That's it. We'll see you next time, guys. Keep rocking metal alive.